Hello everyone. Oh wow. Okay. Just for the morning, you know. It's a good upright voice. My name is uh, Yair Klepper. I'm uh, the co-founder of uh, Lava Network. And today I'm going to talk to you about how with Lava we're decentralizing the most important the most important access to web3. And I want you to start with Lava. I want you to start Everyone feels here the lava. And when you think about lava, think about the flow. That is the first promise of the blockchain. The data flowing between the blockchain and it's permissionless. Everyone can just join and everyone can access the, the data. But we do it today with a protocol, communication protocol that's called RPC, Remote Procedure Call. And this is the way you get access to the data in the blockchain. But what is actually RPC? So when you think about the first premise of the blockchain, every blockchain is assembled from different nodes. And every node, in order to get the access and to get data, query what is the account balance, get the information about the smart contract, you need for that an RPC. So every time that you get, you see what is the access, what is the uh, account uh, balance, you are using actually, you're querying an RPC. And when blockchain, when you think about the blockchain, it's a compromise of different nodes. And we, as long as more nodes we have, this is how blockchain are becoming much more resilient and much more decentralized. So. The first promise of the blockchain is that everyone can run his own node. Everyone can join and run his own node to get access to the blockchain. But I want to ask you something. Who here runs his own node? So there is a few, because it's actually impractical to scale. One of the first values of, of crypto and blockchain in general is the fact that you should not trust, you should verify. And running your own node, as Moxie said in a post one and a half years ago when we started, nobody wants to run his own server. It's like 10 years ago, you're running your own copy of AWS, of GCP, of Azure. It's basically impractical to scale. So I want to take you to this circle of what happens today, both in new ecosystem, existing ecosystem. And when the ecosystem starts, basically everyone wants to join and run its own nodes. So there are a couple of volunteers that join, jumping in and giving you this access to the entire blockchain data flow. Uh, but they're doing that volunteeringly. And when the activity is going higher when there is more demand, basically they are failing to, to scale. This is the, the place when centralized providers, amazing companies like Alchemy, Infura, Blockdemon, Quicknode, appeared in the last few years, and they're lowering the barrier to entry for the blockchain. They're telling you something very simple. They say, don't run your own node, we're gonna do it for you. So once they filling this gap, they provided the access to the blockchain. But then the new developer becoming relying on this very critical piece. And obviously, you don't have too many centralized providers out there. So it gives us back and it brings us back <coughs> sorry, to the same problem that we have with running only a, centralized, a few centralized providers to give access to the blockchain. But what are actually the RPC uh, problem? And why we feel that this fragment, this fragmented layer is holding all the crypto world back. So we've seen a number of examples in the last few years, starting from downtime, when one of the centralized provider is down, you cannot access your uh, MetaMask. You see that with lack of scalability, when there is an NFT drop, when there is a lot of volume activity on a specific DEX, you cannot get, you cannot get access and transactions taking lower, longer. 
you think you think about that with privacy problems, because the realignment on the centralized providers. Um, so when an attacker wants to uh, hijack the middleman, it's much easier. In the last year, you see some examples with DNS hijacking and stuff like that. Sorry, I'm under the water, so just. Censorship. Everyone remember last summer, Tornado Cache. IP spoofing, IP addressing, and all of these problems are causing us to believe that the RPC layer today is broken. So if I summarize that, we see that the access to Web3 is depending on a fragment set of centralized provider. Big, big ecosystems are depending on a few, and small chain uh, struggle to, uh, to scale because they don't have the professional node runners out there. <coughs> and this is what we do in Lava. Lava, it's a decentralized network of top RPC API providers that are held accountable for the data. Instead of you need to provide, you need to get access to a chain and you need to choose one, two, three centralized provider, you get access to a numerous number of providers and us in Lava routering every transaction and making sure that you're going to get access to the best top providers. Usually you should not party so hard after your birthday. <coughs> we do that in a much more cheaper way, much more reliable way on every chain. We're supporting today already 20 chains and we believe that with decentralization, we can solve the problem. So now let me walk you through how Lava works. Basically we are an up chain, L1. Everyone can join, everyone can be a node runner. So once you're node running and you're signing up to provide service, any DAP that need to query some piece of data, read, write, basically we are pairing them with um, a node provider on the other hand. So this is how the RPC relays can be optimal for the performance, can be optimal to be sent off chain, peer to peer, and make the communication with them. After the service, the providers are rewarded for the service. So we have a very special quality of service module that constantly scoring each and every DAP and each and every performance of a transaction. So uh, this is the real version of how providers are held accountable for the data itself. In order for us to make sure that the data is actually from the blockchain and nowhere, no, not from somewhere else, we make sure that every couple of requests, we querying a few uh, transactions, a few providers, and make sure that the data is accurate. <coughs> and today, I want to talk to you about a new concept that we brought, which is a decentralized public RPC. So if you remember my slide a few, a few slides ago, um, public RPC is the access of how ecosystem provide access to new dApps, new developers that want to join. And the problem with public RPC is that ecosystem don't know exactly how to subsidize that. So usually it's rate limited and, you, and when you have mass production and big volumes activity, it doesn't deliver. So we thought in Lava, how do we take the community pool, how we take the developers that are build this community, rewarding them on one hand for running the nodes, but on the other hand, make sure that everyone can join and be a provider. And this is exactly what we do in the decentralized public RPC. Imagine that 
you can get near tokens, optimism tokens, every time that you join the chain, every time that you join this decentralized public RPC. And this is how we make every ecosystem much more resilient and much more scalable. So if we think about how we're powering the community, Lava is an open source. Lava is a community-led protocol that incentivizes every provider that join for a honest behavior, incentivize for the maximum and maximize every transaction and every request from da for data. So think about the fact that more providers in a chain it means more nodes. It means that more developers eventually are coming into the community. So if I'm going back to um, what is this vicious cycle of how entering a new ecosystem, how entering an existing uh, ecosystem, we want to look at it from a different way. So instead of running an RPC node by yourself because you want to build a, a DAP and a, any project on a new ecosystem, so new uh, existing node runners can join the public decentralized RPC and Lava and be rewarded for a quality service. Once the blockchain adoption grows, more providers are coming because there are more rewards, there are more, more activity. And at the end of the day, any provider can join. Not only the biggest providers that have business needs, they need to show profitability. They need to show some other criteria that if you rely on them, we go back to the same drawbacks I presented before. We believe that this helps the network become more decentralized and bring more good projects and more dApps. Think about the one subscription fee, a standard, that if you use and if you believe the multi-chain, if you develop your project, on a certain chain, by one click, you can move to any other chain. This is what we can do with Lava. So I encourage you to join us in Discord. Follow us on Twitter. We are here. The test, our testnet is live and up and running in the last few months. We also have a system production, pro, uh, um, a production system for, uh, for dApps that we are uh, uh, already working with billions of requests. And I want to invite you to the future, which is here. It's community-led, it's in your hands, and uh, yeah, this is Lava. Thank you so much. We have time for one quick question. There you are. Anyone else? No other people. Okay, this is very cool. Um, I agree, centralized RPCs are a huge issue. Quick question, where do the rewards come from? If you're an RPC consumer, do you pay? And then the providers get those rewards? Or yeah, where do the tokens come from? Every, uh, every uh, node provider needs to stake Lava or the community pool um, that obviously is incentivizing the provider to join. And the rewards are paid at the end of every month within Lava. This is how we make sure that after the transaction, we know the transaction was given, uh, dApps are signing the transaction, giving back to the provider, and they're coming to the validators in order to collect the rewards. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all.